of a brief background into current batch versus continuous processes, an introduction to Taylor Coet flow and how it can be applied in a continuous reactor, a case study on the scale up of continuous NCM cathode precursor production using LCTR technology. And finally, we'll invite Lana to answer your technical questions at the end. Please send in your questions through the chat during the presentation to allow some time for translation, and we will address as many as we can. If you have sent in questions beforehand, these will be addressed also. Those questions that we don't get to, we will follow up with you outside this webinar. The webinar is being recorded and a link will be sent to all registrants email addresses after the presentation. So current targets to replace existing technologies such as internal combustion engines are ambitious and likely to require an increase in the performance and manufacturing scale of secondary batteries. Currently, battery designs and chemistries can include elements such as cobalt that may not be sustainable for the long term large scale required to provide a total alternative to combustion engines. Improving battery chemistry and enabling a clear route to large scale production is a valuable part of the overall picture to achieve sustainable power delivery with lower carbon emissions. Lamina's reactor technology is ideally positioned to help researchers in this field develop improved or new materials, continuous processes, and ultimately scale up to production. Conventional tank type chemical reactors currently used for battery materials production and development can be broadly categorized into batch or continuous stirred tank reactors no CSTRs. While batch tank processes can have relative simplicity for cathode co-precipitation, the processes can be labor intensive, have batch to batch variation, and generally have long reaction times. In addition, scale up is not linear. Continuous processes are appealing across a range of industries for inherent improvements in efficiency and process control. Tank reactors can be configured to operate in a continuous mode. However, some of the drawbacks, such as long residence time, remain. Continuous stirred tank processes may be capable of outputting uniform products continuously. However, the process can be complex to set up and optimize, and the scale up is still not straightforward due to significant changes in surface to volume ratio when moving to larger tanks. Cascades of tanks can be used when scaling, but this has further impact on size and complexity. Before we get to Lamina's reactor design, I'll give some background and history of Lamina themselves and the form of fluid flow that is exploited in their reactor. Taylor Couette flow was first discovered around 1890 by French physicist Maurice Couette and used to measure the viscosity of blood. In the 1950s, physicist Jeffrey Ingram Taylor developed a formula to define what we then refer to as Taylor flow. Taylor flow technology was commercialized in heat exchangers around 1980 but Lamina used the technology to develop the continuous Taylor reactor in 2010. Lamina continued to develop the technology for new applications and hold many patents worldwide. So what is Taylor flow? Fluid flow is largely divided into lamina and turbulent flow. Conventional reactors like the tank types mentioned already use turbulent flow. However, because the flow is random, it's difficult to manufacture high purity uniform substances. The area between lamina and turbulent flow is called the transition region, and this is where Taylor flow occurs. Lamina's continuous Taylor reactor produces high purity 
uniform substances leading to products with improved properties by using Taylor flow to mix reagents and suspensions. Taylor flow is broadly donut shaped and flows in opposite directions as shown in the top right. Two opposing vortices are defined as one ring pair. It's generated in fluids between an inner rotating cylinder and an outer vessel cylinder wall. And this makes up the core construction of Lammers reactor. The formula for calculating the Taylor number used in reactor design and modeling is as shown. Important factors are the radius of the rotating body, the gap between it and the outer cylinder, the dynamic viscosity of the fluid and the rotation speed. The LCTR uses Taylor flow along the entire length of the vessel to give highly efficient and powerful mixing without any dead zones. This means there's more control over the process and improved uniformity in the products generated. The stirrer bar RPM is a key variable, which we'll see later in the case study. This illustration shows typical components of an LCTR. The solutions are injected in port number one, of which there may be several. They pass through the reaction zone number seven under Taylor mixing conditions and the final product is discharged from outlet number five. Number six is the stirrer bar, which induces the Taylor vortices at variable RPM. Temperature is controlled by the outer jacket of the double jacket structure with coolant flowing between ports two and three. Outlet number four is the drain for cleaning. Lamina use computational fluid dynamics extensively to model their reactors. The figure on the left depicts Taylor flow generated by CFD in the reaction zone of a one litre reactor. Taylor flow stabilizes after about eight seconds and can be established from 2.7 RPM and up. The number of rings changes according to the stirring speed and turbulence occurs between the Taylor ring pairs at 1000 RPM and above. Above 5000 RPM, the Taylor flow dis disappears entirely and becomes purely turbulent. So far, we've shown a few schematics and diagrams of the reactor working volume. Here's a one litre reactor from a reference site in a typical setup for producing cathode materials. Note the, uh, I'll just use a pointer quickly here. Note the um, pH probe, which is first in the vessel, and three uh, reagent pumps, which uh, together uh, dictate the residence time through the reactor via their combined flow rate. LCTRs can be adapted to and optimized for different applications. Some of the possibilities include multiple injection ports along the vessel, process analytical technology ports, variable temperature control zones, different shapes of the stirrer bar, and the gap dimensions. I'm going to move on to talk more about the applications and the case study now. As I've mentioned, uh, LCTR reactors have a broad range of applications. They are used for development and production of various battery materials and cathode chemistries, including the examples listed. Feel free to contact me for literature examples and further information. In addition, they can be used for synthesis of graphene oxide and generally many crystallization or precipitation processes where controlled particle size and shape is desired. Today we're going to focus on a case study matching an existing commercially available NCM 622 cathode precursor production process and then scaling it up to a continuous process using the LCTR.
This example will show how the process developed on the one litre lab scale reactor that we've seen can be replicated on the 50 and then finally 1000 litre commercial scale reactors. These ones shown here were used in the following case study. So this test started by comparing the NCM622 material made by Lamina on the one litre LCTR against a commercially available product shown as E Company here. These experiments show how the particle size of NCM can be controlled and tuned according to the process parameters available. In this case, residence time, stirrer RPM or agitation speed, pH and temperature. In figure one, the particle size increases with longer residence time and lower agitation speeds. However, the lower the agitation speed, the lower the tech density of the product tends to be. In other words, when the agitation speed is increased, the particle size becomes smaller, but higher density material can be made. Figure two shows the change in particle size according to pH and ammonium concentration. The higher the concentration of ammonium and the lower the pH value, the larger the particle size. Referring to figure three, particle size increases with reaction temperature. Looking at the SEM images on the right, the result of a 16 hour reaction in a tank type reactor is similar to a four hour reaction in the LCTR. This illustrates the LCTR's increased mixing force having re reduced the residence time to 25% of the original process in this case. This data shows the results following preparation of the NCM material in Lamina's lab and sending it for external electrochemical testing. It shows that the LCTR was able to match the existing commercial product even with limited process optimization on the lab scale. With further process optimization, it is possible to improve performance beyond existing products. The next phase of the project was to replicate the results on the 50 litre reactor based on the results from the one litre today. Scale up was modeled with CFD in the 50 litre vessels working volume as seen on the left. The graph on the right compares the calculated linear velocity in the one litre and 50 litre vessels. So when scaling up, the length of the reactor and the diameter of the rotating cylinder are also increased. So the linear velocity is higher at the same agitation speed. I'll just use the laser pointer again, just quickly here. So for example, at 600 RPM in the one liter reactor, the linear velocity is 1.8 meters per second. And in the 50 liter reactor, it's 5.9 meters per second. So almost three times higher at the same RPM. In this case, 300 RPM was selected as the likely best conditions for scaling up the process. This next slide shows the results of varying the residence time between two, four and six hours at chosen 300 RPM. As before, when the residence time increases, so does particle size. The particle also changes to a smoother, more spherical shape with more residence time. Next, the agitation speed and reaction time were tested further and the same trend was observed as on the one litre reactor. Again, agitation speed and reaction time are factors that influence particle growth and density. The particle shape of the commercial product can be matched on the LCTR by processing for six hours at 300 RPM, two hours at 700 RPM, 
or one hour at 1100 RPM. However, the higher the agitation speed and the lower the reaction time, the smaller the particle size. So this has to be considered when choosing final process conditions. As before, with the one liter testing, these are the results evaluating the electrochemical properties of the NCM prepared at 300 RPM over four and six hours. Again, they show close agreement with the reference material, demonstrating ease of scale up to pilot scale in this case. All the work up until now enabled Lamina to begin design and testing of a 1000 litre version of the LCTR using the results and conditions learned from the 1 and 50 litre scales. The main task to achieve successful scale up, as we've seen, was to replicate the conditions in the vessel, this time a significantly larger one than before. Once again, Lamina employed CFD to predict and model fluid behavior in a larger vessel. And as a result of making the same number of Taylor flow pairs and closely matching the linear velocity, the particle size and tap density of the eventual product from the 1000 litre reactor were very similar. This dem demonstrates a comparatively simple method to scale up to production volumes, which is not always the case in other batch or continuous processes for these materials. Finally, here's some image, images showing the final installation of the one litre reactor that produces these materials, as I know we've seen a lot of the diagrams so far. And with that, that uh, wraps up the presentation element of this webinar today. I've touched on the current state of play regarding battery material production and background into batch versus continuous processes for them. We've introduced Lamina and the operating principles behind their reactor technology, the LCTR and how it can benefit processes with shorter reaction times and a direct method to scale up. We've had a look at some detail of how fine control can be achieved over a process by tuning the variables available, which leads to control particle size, shape, and density. Finally, we've showed one example of the work carried out until now working towards optimized continuous production of battery materials. But there are many organizations and companies worldwide using lamina, laminas reactors in this field as one more tool available that, for furthering progress in this area. So thank you all for attending today. I really appreciate you taking the time. We will now open the webinar to questions for the Q&A section. One question we've received was, what are the smallest volumes these reactors can work with? So that's a good question. I'll just click over to a, another slide quickly. So this is the uh, entire product range uh, Lamina have currently, and the smallest reactor they make has a working volume of about 20 milliliters. However, you'll notice I, I only really mentioned the one litre reactor and up uh, for battery materials. The reason for this, uh, as we touched on, is that the pH control is really important in getting good results for this particular application. And the pH probe is requires the one litre reactor to be able to fit it into the vessel uh, without disrupting the flow. So you can use two, 20 or 200 milliliter reactors for all sorts of applications like chemical synthesis processes and so on, but for uh, cathode co-precipitation, uh, the one liter and up uh, is recommended. Hi, James, thanks for the presentation. 
Uh, my name's Tess. Um, I was just wondering, um, what's the kind of throughput on the thousand litre unit? Throughput. I think I will pass that over to Lamina shortly. I can just provide a little bit of background. So, in terms of these, uh, this application, um, this is the throughput we'd be expecting uh, for cathode materials. So about one kilo per day for the one litre reactor and five to ten for the, um, I believe this is a uh, 50 litre reactor here shown. And uh, for that, can I uh, hand over to Kjol? Are, are you able to help with that? So throughput for the 1000 litre reactor? Um, hello, my name is uh, Kjol Son from Lamina, and I'm very glad to introduce you, uh, Mr. Hong, in Korea, the CEO of Lamina, and he will answer the questions for us. And I ask for your understanding that I uh, need some time to translate the question into Korean. And can I have the question again, please? Just what's the typical throughput on the thousand litre units? Like what's the production rate? Sajang님, 1000 litre 반응기를 생산할 때 걸리는 기간이 어느 정도 될까요? 제작하는 기간이요? 네. 일단은 뭐 재질에 따라 다르긴 하지만 이제 한 4에서 한 6개월 정도 주시면 될것 같아요. Size or UK area? Uh, it depends on the material, but uh, it would be four to six months for 1000 liter reactor. 1000 liter 반응기로 하루에 얼마 정도의 용량을 생산할 수 있나요? 음, 일단은 그게 이제 고령군이라든지 가능한 시간에 따라 달라지긴 하는데, 일단은 저희가 배터리 기준으로 할 경우에는, 2.4 it depends on the reaction time, but for a battery um, field, it would be 2.4 tons per day with 1,000 liters. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Kyo. Um I've just seen that uh, we had a couple of extra questions, so I'll I'll work through those. The first question is, how translatable are the parameters to go from a conventional continuous stirred tank to LCTSR? I think did did you mean uh, the laminar? flow reactor in that way so okay so translating a process from a continuous stirred tank to the laminar reactor is there any uh, agreement between the two Kjol again could I ask you to um, comment on that 어, 질문이 그 연속식 반응기를 라미나 반응기로 어, 응용해서 사용하는 것이 가능한가요 네, 기존에 이제 뭐 배치 타입으로 사용하시는 연속식 반응기라면은 조건 그대로 가고 이제 저희 이제 반응기 장점이 반응 시간이 상당히 짧아지거든요. 그래서 예를 들어서 이제 그 탱크형 타입이 이제 반응 시간이 한 4시간이 걸린다. 그러면 저희는 한 1시간 정도 필요가지고 RPM이라든지 온도라든지 나머지 조건 이제 고민 관계 해가지고 하면은 무사한 효과가 없을 것 같아요. Yes, you can use um, continuous process in batch, for example. It, um, you can transfer that to the lamina uh, reactor. And one of the best of our reactor is that we can shorten the reaction time. For example, if you needed four hours reaction time in a tank type, we can shorten that time to one hour. And you can um, use the same conditions in our reactor. Uh, just to add a little bit to that, I think um, if you were comparing similar size CSTR setups, 
you might start with Lamina's reactor by operating it as a, a batch process initially to try and um, gauge the similarities or differences between uh, the two processes and uh, go from there. I think it's, um, it's probably going to be different for every process, I would imagine. So um, that's the methodology we would recommend. I hope that I hope that addresses the question. If not, um, feel free to drop us a message outside of the webinar. Uh, we've got a, another good question here. Um, so uh, someone is asking, how does the uh, initial, so the upfront cost of the laminar reactor versus a con conventional CSTR for the same volume? So that's not something I can answer because I imagine it depends on the complexity of the uh, stirred tank setup as well. Um, but again, Kjol, could I ask uh, you if there's any uh, further information you could add? So, um, you know, would you say, what would you say is a typical difference between the upfront uh, costs of the uh, laminar reactor versus CSTRs? Lamina 반응기와 기존의 CSTR 반응기의 가격을 비교한다면 어떻게 비교할 수 있을까요? 일단은 가격이 이제 비교할 때 이제 용량으로 비교하시는 방법이고 이제 생산량으로 비교하시는 방법이 있는데 어, 저희가 이제 기존 반응기보다 이제 가격이 좀 같은 용량으로 봤을 때 금액은 더 비싸지만 <웃음> 생산량으로 봤을 때는 어떤지 절감 효과가 한 30% 이상이 되기 때문에 아까도 보셨지만 이제 천리터 반응기에서 이제 운전을 할 경우 약한 200일 이상을 돌리게 되면은 투자비 대비 훨씬 더 이렇게 이제 효율적이라는 것은 결과적으로 언급을 낼 수가 있었거든요. 총기 비용이 저희가 좀 높지만은 장시간이 이제 계속 운전할수록 저희 이제 장비가 더 효율적이다, 경제적이다 이렇게 보시면 됩니다. Yes, the, when you compare the costs um, from our reactor to the other conventional CSTR um, reactor, of course, the initial costs would be higher because our tank, our reactor, would um, the price would be higher. But if you compare the costs for the production and for a longer time, then you will see that you have um, reduced your um, in, in inventions. So. Um, you can compare with the production, then you will see that the costs are much um, less than um, the other conventional reactors. Thanks, Kjol. Yeah, just to add up, um, so I think we have some information we can share if you're interested uh, showing energy costs of the process, um, which are generally quite favorable. And you know, one of the things that helps is being able to reduce these residence and reaction times as well. So we're not running the reactor as long, uh, which helps with that. So again, let us know if you need any more information outside of the webinar. I think we're coming up to the last question now, I believe. So another good one. Um, are all uh, LCTRs built in South Korea? And is there any technical support in Europe? So again, Kjol, your input would be good. But to start with, um, I can mention that, yes, uh, the LCTRs are all built by Lamina in South Korea and shipped worldwide. There is technical support in Europe. So ourselves, we're the distributor and local support for the UK and Ireland. And there is also a distributor in Europe covering that territory. Maybe Kjol, if you want to add anything to that. 어 한국에서 어 이제 유럽으로 판매를 했을 때어 기술적인 지원이 있느냐라고 이제 질문을 주었는데 어 제임스가 답변을 해주었지만 혹시 추가로 또 말씀하시고 싶은 부분이 있나요? 저희가 이제 그 독일에 이제 저희가 이제 장비를 이제 많이 판매하고 있어가지고 저희가 이제 독일에 이제 대리점도 있고 저희가 이제 프랑스 쪽도 이제 저희가 반응기를 판매하고 있어가지고 
그 고객 편한테 한번 들어보시면 저희가 AS에 있는 그런 거를 하는 게 이제 다 해결해줬다라고 말씀을 다 듣고 있거든요. 그런 문제는 전혀 걱정하지 않으셔도 될것 같습니다. Yes, um, we have sold a lot of reactors to Germany and also in France. So we have also distributed in Germany and they can provide technical um, support. And if you contact our customers or our partners, you can um, check and you can see that they got um, a lot of support from us and also the repair is, um, wasn't any issue for them. So uh, if you have any issues regarding technical problems or um, repair issues, then we will be ready to help you and support you. Okay, great. Thank you, Kjol. And I think that's all the questions we've had so far. So last chance if anyone else has a question. Otherwise, our contact details are available in the presentation and as mentioned before we will be sending out a link to the recording if you'd like to watch it again or share with your colleagues um, otherwise thank you all very much for attending once again we really appreciate it i hope it was useful and informative and uh, i look forward to uh, answering more of your questions outside of the webinar Thanks very much and have a great rest of your day.